we're back, baby. Oh, close that drawer. I always forget how wide, like, this lens is sometimes, because I don't really use it for my streams. I really just use it for these videos right here. But how are we doing, guys? I hope y'all are having an amazing day. Sorry this video is late. Um, I don't know what time you guys are seeing this, but I had work today, um, so I had to open. I usually close on Thursdays, which I've loved, because it's able for me to watch Jujutsu Kaisen, go to the gym, come home, watch the episode again while I take notes, do my video, and the video's out by five. But I had to open today, and then I hung out with some friends afterwards. So, you know what? It is what it is, and here we are now, guys. Hold on. Let me make sure. Okay, my, my mic is good volume. We are good. Um, so, yeah, I apologize for the late video. I don't know if you guys are watching this, you know, Thursday night as soon as I can, uh, or, you know, Friday morning, but... Thank you guys for watching regardless. My last video did okay. I was kind of surprised about how well it did because it started off real slow. But uh, 77 views, I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad about it at all compared to my last two. But I think it's because like it, this one will probably like not do as well because it was a big episode and everyone wanted to see every single angle from it. And I totally understand that. Man, I've watched that episode like four times already. Not including the two that I watched uh, to, to take my notes with. But man, that was the episode. But this one is definitely like an information heavy episode, but not like action filled. And I'm okay with that because we need and you know, there might there's going to come a time in the Shibuya arc where if, if the hype is to be believed, which so far it is, we're just going to get hit over the head over and over and over again, you know, episode after episode after episode with like some pretty traumatizing things. And again, some traumatizing things happen in this episode too. Like it, it like it's masked as like a, a slower episode, but there's a lot of information going on. And, and we lost a, we lost another precious soldier, um, who I'm very, very sad about, honestly. Spoilers at the at the top. I'll, I'll keep that non spoilery but from now on, full spoilers, guys. If you guys haven't watched the episode, please go watch it. This season is insane. This is episode 34 called Pandemonium. Mechamaru uh, starts up. He boots up, and I guess this has something to do with his pact. Now, I understand pacts to a certain degree where, like, two people make an agreement, and if you go against the pact, then there's, like, dire consequences. But I guess there's, like clauses and junctions and you know addendums to like every pack that you can form and i don't know how that works but something about mechamaru's pact with mahito said that even if he dies if gojo satoru is sealed because he knew that was the plan by the curses and the curse users then he wanted to be able to like get resurrected in like three different kind of remote bodies like these little kind of like handhelds that like look exactly like this but it's a little mechamaru face um and that's what happens and he says that uh like yuji's like well why why am i to believe you is like well because i'm here this was part of my pack that i would only come back i died you know 10 days ago um, which is actually really sad to hear because uh, I was like, oh, is he still alive somewhere? Like, did he fake his death? But no, he is dead. This is just part of his pact. And uh, the only reason he's here is because Gojo was sealed. So it is official that Gojo is sealed. And we see the ceiling. And man, one, the music does so good with like the piano. And it's like, and I love that Gojo will still be Gojo no matter what he is going through. And I love, like, this, the bond, I literally have this in capital letters, the bond between Gato and Gojo is so strong, and the fact that he's, like, he's like, oh, any final words, like, no, not really, but are you gonna take this? How long are you gonna be a puppet? And then, like, Gato's hand wakes up and starts choking himself. I don't know what that means, and even Gato and Mahito talk about it, and it's like, oh, is the soul part of the body? Because my memories of this body that I took over is trying to take over this. And, like, the soul is disconnected from the body that I have control over. And Mahito's like, I don't know, not from my worldview. And maybe each worldview has a different perspective and different reasonings and different rules for each worldview. And I kind of like that to a certain extent. Obviously, to a certain extent. But I do like how when it comes to, like, curse curse users and jujutsu and souls and like in the the I want to be very careful with my wording here in the show I really like this theory that everybody's different worldview uh is like based on their perspective and like their power set I guess 
because Mojito's like whole power is like based on the soul and like the soul is more important than the body and the soul forms the body and that's what he controls and that's how he transfigures people is through their soul. But something with Gato's body or his soul is still in there so much so that just Gojo speaking to him has him like rebelling against this, uh, I call it the Krang curse. I'm sure we're going to get his name eventually. Um, the Krang curse that's in his brain, this puppet curse. And I, I thought that was just a really cool moment. Like, I, I didn't think, you know, it was actually going to lead to anything. And even like, he like freaks out, like he like panics for like a second. And then he starts laughing and talking to Mahito about it. So I don't know how much that affected him. Apparently not much, but it was just a really cool moment. And then Gojo is sealed and the credits roll and I, I i always skip the opening song the first time i watch it because like especially this morning you know i was like oh it, i had to go to work and i was like oh let me get through this episode i want to watch it now um but i always love watching it like as the season goes on you know i literally like saw a tiktok about this where like oh anime watcher watching the opening like oh this is cool and then the manga watcher manga reader watching the opening it's like oh my gosh they're just showing everything and that's very possible it's very like and we already saw like there's a part in the anime opening where like you see gojo with like the blood stain on his cheek going like a very shocked face and obviously we know that's when he saw gato like we saw that moment so like and you know i said that about the the season one arc two opening where you see them fighting um hanami and you're like, oh, what's that? Oh, they're fighting? Okay. And like you you get referenced a lot of things in opening that you might not know until they happen. And I know understand that. So it's always cool to see that. Um, I love it. It's time for you to wake up and start strangling the puppet curse. I love that it's so much. Uh Gojo will never not be Gojo. And they they go back, um, they go back to Mei Mei, and I'm I'm wondering how strong she is she's a grade one so obviously she's very strong we saw her in action a little bit getting the bonus uh with her her giant axe i can't wait like i love that i her weapon is possibly the coolest weapon in the series so far uh is the relationship with the brother very weird yes but we're choosing to ignore that for now but like i love that they're there they don't take mechamaru's word for it immediately because obviously they know he's the mole like they don't know what happened with you know mahito in the mech battle uh the giant pacific rim battle but they know he's the mole and they just couldn't find him i don't know if they know he's dead or not until they told until he told them uh they he might have just been assumed missing but he, Mechamu, uh, does give them a lot of information, like, hey, Gojo's been sealed, you guys need to, like, kind of converge on him, there's four veils, there's a veil trapping the common people inside, a veil trapping Gojo inside, a veil keeping the sorcerers from entering, and then a veil trapping all the people inside of, like, Shibuya. So there's like four levels, and so the sorcerers need to get rid of that second veil, get rid of all the veils basically, and then they'll be able to move freely because right now there's no like cell phone signal and they can't really communicate with each other. It's it's very scary. It's like a scary situation because a lot of them are waiting inside the first veil but outside the second veil because they can't get in, trying to figure out what's going on. Um, uh, he tells Yuji, you have to go tell, you know, get on top of a building, basically scream from the heavens. Gojo sealed. We need to start moving towards, you know, the Shibuya station, B5, where it is. And that's when we see uh, that Gato, I'm just going to call him Gato because uh, I know it, it's not him, but I'm just going to, for brevity's sake, Gato is holding the prison realm and it slams onto the ground like it's too heavy for him to hold. And Gojo is so him that even the prison realm is having trouble trying, like, kind of processing all the information that is Gojo Satoru. And, like, you even see Gojo kind of, like, just, like, kick back, like, eh, well, this is really bad, but I'm depending on everybody else. And, like, I love that. I just love him so much. I don't know how long it's going to be before we see him. I, I hope he gets rescued at the end of this season. We'll see. My guess is not because, and just for story's sake, because you can't have a deus ex machina who is Gojo. And I like his character. Like, we got a lot of great backstory and premature death, you know, where he was. And the reason why that was good story is because he was fallible. He was still very strong, but he wasn't unbeatable like he is now. Now, is Sukuna able to beat him? 
we'll find out eventually i'm sure down the road but for now he is unbeatable now i like i said before i thought chozo hanami and jogo were like okay that's a good match it wasn't they got the brakes beat off them and he, he barely broke a sweat if it wasn't for the prison realm like yeah they they flooded the station with people and they made him do like the 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 genius you know 0.2 second domain and then kill every he was breathing hard sure so yeah i guess he did break a little bit of a sweat but after he caught his breath <coughs> all the special grades were still unconscious he would have just killed them one by one easily he like it would have been game over so you do need those really powerful characters out of the way otherwise they can just come in at the last second and save the day every single time but uh where was i uh a curse user who is stronger than the grasshopper curse, but maybe like a first grade curse user, not special grade, but first grade. He's like a, a, a weird looking dude with a with a curse dog. Maybe it's a real dog. I don't know. But I, since curse user, I'm going to assume it's a curse dog. And maybe it's like, I'll handle him. You go warn everybody else and tell them what's going on. I cannot wait to see maybe in action. I think it's going to be super awesome. I'm really excited for this fight. Um, uh, wrong. So, uh, da, 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 da. Human, uh, transfigured humans are attacking civilians in that second veil, so the sorcerers need to move. Uh, GG. My precious, I literally say, my precious boy, why were you so focused on the phone call? That little waif looking a hole, and I'm trying hard not to cuss so I don't get demonetized for the very little, like, next to nothing money I make on YouTube. Um,. Stabs him in the back and I thought like, you know, we just saw Gojo get stabbed in the back and like he survived it So I was like, oh, maybe it's anime rules. I know IGT isn't Gojo, but it's anime and then he just keeps stabbing and then he like steps on the back of his head and I'm just like, oh. It hurt man. I thought he was gonna turn around at the last second I thought th something was gonna happen to save our good boy IGT, but it just doesn't and it bothers me because like the way he tries to protect Yuji in the first season uh, during the whole Junpei arc, uh, that hurts. And like how he f says, like, he feels like he failed, you know, because like, you know, Yuji dies because, you know, of the, 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 what was it, the cursed womb arc uh, at the, at the prison uh, when they kind of got set up for Yuji to die. And just like he tries so hard and even in zero when uh i have their names uh mimiko and nanako and he's like you're so young you haven't even like you have so much life ahead of you are you sure you want to make these decisions like he's still trying to talk them out of it as they're like killing his co-workers he's like such a good person and uh, he deserved better he deserved better uh, i can't wait uh haruta i guess is his name I can't wait to see how that's another I just can't wait to see how he dies like even in his one like you know 30 second scene in last season I'm like oh this guy's a little worm like some just beat the crap out of him I thought Nobara was going to and then you know the the seal got lifted there um and then he ran away freaking little punk uh and we see the bob cut uh person uh the androgynous person as said by Mei Mei uh in the first season uh kind of orchestrating this whole thing and that's just like his job is going around killing like the the assistants outside the veil to like basically cut off their communication from each other so they have this planned out pretty well and it's kind of scary of like how everything is going to plan like no hanami wasn't supposed to die so that's a, a win for the good guys but compared to hanami dying to gojo getting sealed it's not even close uh so the bad guys are up like quite a bit and it's I don't want to say it's the fourth quarter. It's still like maybe not even halftime yet, but they're kicking our butts right now. Um, Yuji just screaming for Nanami in the building. Like, I love how he enters this the veil. And I'm wondering like if he like breaks through that veil because it seems like he does. Like maybe that's the veil they're not supposed to enter, but he like, like breaks through because he's so strong. Kicks the crap. And it shows the growth of Yuji because like he, you know, he didn't want to kill the transfigured humans when he was fighting Mahito. And then even when he fought um, uh, the two, not, not I guess curse wombs, but like uh, Chozo's brothers, I can't think of their name. I just know Chozo, his younger brothers uh, that Chozo's out for revenge for. He like, you know, he didn't like it. Like he says, sorry, when he kills um, Wing King guy. And then he talks to Nobara about it, how hard it is for him. But, and I'm not saying like, this is like good growth, but he, 
it's growth in that he knows he can't save everybody now. He knows that these transfigured humans are beyond repair. They're beyond fixing. There can only be one thing to do, and that's like, unfortunately, put them down. Um, and so he just gets to work, saves a bunch of people, and then jumps on a building without even like blinking. Just like, oh, I'm in the veil. Boom, 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 boom. Bop, 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 bop. Smack, 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 smack. Up on a building. Nah, nah, me. Nah, nah, me. Oh, it's so, it's so. I, I, I appreciate these moments uh, of goofiness because like watching Attack on Titan, it's like pretty hardcore. And so there's like very few goofy moments in that show when they do there's just like this breath of fresh air the sunshine on your face before the clouds come in and the rain starts again but uh, Jujutsu Kaisen like does sprinkle in those moments and after like a lot of basically two and a two and a half episodes of heaviness uh we get like at least like this one moment where he's like screaming from the rooftop and then Fushigo just comes in hey chops him in the back of the head um I like after you know we we get the highlight reel of Gojo last week. We get him getting sealed, and you know, rightfully so. People are focused that like, oh my gosh, like Gato and Gojo's bond is so strong. Like that's how he distracted him. That was his plan the whole time. And we we understand like, oh man, in this scenario, like they might not win at Shibuya. And I didn't realize this episode does such a good job of like making us realize how much bigger this problem is. Is that this is a nationwide problem if not a worldwide problem they're focusing on japan right now but it's like and like when nanami hears like oh gojo's been sealed he's like oh we need to go now because if this is true humankind might be over and it's because gojo is so powerful that not just these special grade curses that were planning gojo's demise but every single curse around the country we'll just keep it to japan right now every single curse around the country around the nation of japan was waiting in the dark along with every like curse user because gojo's so powerful they don't want to like cause too much noise and get on his radar and get killed and get exercised or get thrown in prison like whatever you do with with uh, curse users but now that if they know he's gone it's going to be like the like the episodes is called pandemonium it is going to be pandemonium and humans civilians like you and me we're dead because we can't even see the curses let alone fight them there was a, a funny thing where it's like that amazing shot where gojo's like hey, and just using his infinity to to smash hanami against the wall and it's like what everybody else on the train station is just like a crazy guy staring at a wall and it's like yeah that's what every, that's what we would see it's because we can't even see them let alone fight them and so i like that outer perspective and they they do a little bit more uh with hanami and then with uh what's his name um okay you can go away now um uh you know uh they like he gives a rundown saying like hey gojo's a one-man clan and there is a lot riding on him and the domino effect of his being sealed is going to reverberate around the entire w nation, possibly the world. And so we need to get him out now because the more people find out that he is sealed, the worse it is going to get. And with how few sorcerers there are, you know, even in the events of Zero, like they had to call in the clans and every single like, you know, for hire good sorcerer, they still barely won let alone like the entire and that's just like gato's curses that he controlled not just every single curse around the nation so i do like that we get like oh there's so much more at stake than just this fight right now it's like possibly the fate of the world like they they've been talking about like oh curses ruling the world i didn't realize it was like one step away from happening and that one step is either sukuna being reactivated with all the fingers or Gojo being sealed. And it's like, oh, got it. That's that's good to know. Uh, and that's the they we cut back to the you know the bad guys. Gato has to stay still with the prison realm because it's like, you know, basically like not downloaded uh, Gojo yet. Uh, Mahito Chozo is like, I'm gonna go kill Itadori and get uh, and uh, Nobata and get revenge for my brothers. Jogo's like, ah, oh, well, we were gonna feed the fingers to him and release Sakuna, so we can't do that. Mahito's like, I don't know. We've got Gojo here. 
and then Sukuna could be resurrected with his other fingers, and we don't even know if he's going to be on our side if he's resurrected. So maybe we can fulfill our plan without Sukuna, and we can kill Itadori anyways. And so Chozo and Mahito are going out to kill Yuji, and if they get to him first, they can kill him. If Jogo gets to him first, he gets to feed him the finger. So you know what? Not not a, not the best for uh for a boy Yuji looking right now. I hope he's ready for the storm that is on the way to him. And I don't know what's gonna happen, but at least in the opening, we see him go up against Mahito and possibly with Toto, which oh my god, I'd love to see that. So we'll see what happens, but I'm hoping Toto shows up because we could use him right now. Absolutely. Um, and then Nanami is like, okay, I'm going to go take care of, oh, what does he say? Nanami, uh, tell, he takes, tells them to take care of the students. So Nanami, I believe is going to, I know Nanami is going to take care of the veils and, uh, Itadori and Fushiguro and Inokun are going to take care of the people attacking all the assistants outside of the veils. I believe I could be wrong in my assessment about that. I meant to write it down, but I didn't. There was just there's a lot of information going on right here. But Nanami is going off on his own, which I, I don't like. I don't like <laughs> we're losing too many people. I don't want my boy to die. Um, but uh, uh, they're going to also tell the other because I don't think, you know, Panda's group or um, Nobata's group know that Gojo is sealed. I don't think they know that. I think only Nanami's group does. And so I think Fushiguro and Hit, like Yuji and Ino, are going around to tell them as well, like spread the info to the other two groups because they need to know. Uh, so that's the episode. And then we end after the credits. Uh, Awasaka and two other people, which I'm assuming they're the curse users that started the veils because they've got the, the big clothespins on them with the wrapping on it i think they're the ones that did the veils um around shibuya uh they they're very happy that gojo is sealed so they're obviously not good curse users uh seems like that's gonna be the fight next next episode i don't know i really don't know what the fights are gonna be because we are we are gearing up for a lot of fights because nanami is gonna go after some people i don't know if he's gonna meet up with mahito or chozo or jogo I hope none of them, because I think Nanami will lose to any of them. I think he might be able to take Chozo. I don't know. I don't think he could take Jogo, because he can't do a, a domain like Jogo or Mahito can, so he'll lose that. Um, and then possibly Mei Mei against a uh, dog curse user, and then possibly our, our boy trio against the veil curse users, and then we still have Maki and her group uh, with the elder in some... I don't know. It's a lot. It's a lot going on, and I don't know what's next. I can't... I This episode went by too fast, and I like the episode. I... We just need 45 minutes. We need 45-minute episodes. We do. We need 45 minute episodes and that will be my final word. Thank you guys so much. Let me know what you thought of the episode. A lot of info, but a lot of good info. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night.